The countdown is on at NASA, not to a takeoff, but to a big splash down. The International Space Station will be retired after 23 years in service. The current station will remain busy for the better part of the next decade, until 2030. Then it will be taken out of orbit and sent plunging towards Earth, landing in the Pacific Ocean. NASA plans to create multiple new space stations through partnerships with three private companies, Blue Origin, NanoRacks LLC, and Northrop Grumman. They'll work alongside NASA to build and launch mixed-use stations. The new ones will house government space programs and private companies venturing into Earth's orbit. And those stations should be in orbit before the International Space Station is sunk. Joining us now is former NASA astronaut Mike Massimino. He's a professor of mechanical engineering at Columbia University. Professor Massimino, welcome. Good to have you with us. Joshua, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks. So can we just talk about the long term for a second, the commercialization of space travel, the commercialization of space stations? What do you make of that? Is that on balance a good thing, a bad thing, mixed, too soon to tell? What do you think? Well, I, I think we'll eventually find out, but I'm, I'm really hoping it's going to be a good thing, and I expect it to be a really good thing. It's something that NASA has been wanting to do for a long time, is turn over a lot of the operations in space and the benefits of space to private enterprise. And there were plans going way back decades ago at the beginning of the space shuttle program where they were looking to have uh, commercially run uh, space stations. And the thought was the space shuttle would be flying so often that it would go up there to retrieve experiments and bring people up there for a couple of days and then bring them down. And, and that was all in the plan. And then they had the major accident in 1986 and that kind of ended that idea. So I think what's exciting now is that after all these decades, we're at the point where it looks like the idea of having commercial space stations can take hold once again. Why get rid of the ISS? Why not just refurbish it, repair it, renovate it? Well, it's, it's going to be 30 years old, over 30 years old. It actually, a little more than that. It launched in 1998 and was tended with crews going up to visit and continue to build it until 2000 when we were able to permanently put people on board and change them out about every six months like we have been doing in these past 22 years. It's got about another nine years according to the plan. You know, they might extend it a little bit, but 30 years is kind of a pretty long time for any spacecraft. That was the length of the shuttle program. And getting 30 years out of the out of the space station, I think, is a is a pretty good goal. And we're not going to just give up on space stations. There's a plan. One of the plans is to add on to the current space station, and then when it deorbits, it have a, a commercial space station there in its in its place. Or as you said, some of these other companies that might be launching a space station. So it's not like we're giving up on space stations. As hopefully we're going on to a, an improved way to conduct a research in microgravity and have space stations that both the government and commercial enterprise can use. So you know, 30 years is a pretty long time. If, if we can get that far with it, I'm sure we can. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see what the condition it's in at that time. But, but I think that's a pretty realistic goal and, and then move on to the next phase. Talk to me about what this decommissioning is going to be like. I think it's easy to hear mm -hmm. about the ISS splashing down into the Pacific Ocean and think of something from like a Michael Bay movie. Like I've seen this scene before <laughs> and it don't end well. How do you do that in a way that is control, you know what I'm saying, I'm being hyperbolic, but you get what I'm yeah, saying, no, like, the idea of a space station yeah. comes down through the sky yeah. Yeah. just sounds like terror. Yeah. Like, how does this work yeah. in a way that is controlled and manageable and that doesn't turn into, like, a Michael Bay movie? Yeah, no, I, uh, you don't want that. Uh, Michael, well, uh, Michael Bay movies are, are, are pretty good, I guess, but we don't want that kind of disaster happening, if that's what you're referring to, of course, but... Uh, now, what, what they'll do is they'll have a controlled re-entry, which means that there will be propulsion and guidance to guide it back through the Earth's atmosphere. A lot of it will probably burn up as it enters the atmosphere. Right now, the space station is traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. As they deorbit it, they'll, with having a controlled re-entry, they'll do it in such a way that as it hits the atmosphere, it'll slow down and, uh, and with through friction, as it slows down, it'll go thousands of degrees of heat. So a lot of it will disintegrate, will burn up in reentry, which is, which is a good thing, actually. And then the larger pieces which make it through that experience will land in, the, in this area of the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is really big. And you see, you see Earth from space, it's blue for a reason. And that is that it's, it's mostly water. And the biggest ocean is the Pacific Ocean. And the spot that they picked, just so every, no one gets nervous, 
is the uh, most remote part of the Pacific Ocean. So it's right. it's the furthest away from any land. It's a remote area, and that's where the bigger pieces that survive reentry will land. So I think we can be pretty sure that uh, it's going to be a safe reentry. So it's going to reenter in a controlled way. It's not going to fall mm -hmm. per se. It's kind of going yeah. to fly. It'll be guided down into the atmosphere, burn up largely, not become yet another massive piece of space junk orbiting the Earth. Before I have to let you go, I wonder if there is anything about the old space station that you might miss or that you think that the space community might look back on fondly, even though it's not going to be in service anymore. Oh, I, I think there's going, to, there's going to be lots of things. It's an incredible construction project, Joshua. When I, when I first heard about this as a new astronaut, I became an astronaut, a NASA astronaut in 1996, and this was on its way to, to uh, taking place, the space station, but we hadn't built anything yet. And the idea that you could take countries from around the world, countries of Europe, Japan, Canada, the United States, and Russia, cooperating to build this incredible engineering project in the sky, to, is just, I didn't know if it could really happen. So I think international cooperation, what it's done in the past years, after it was built, these past 10 years or so, the science potential has been unbelievable what they've been able to discover. So I don't, the game's not over yet. 2031 is still a ways away. We've got about another 10 years or so, another decade, where they're going to be using this, this uh, space station to answer a lot of questions, make discoveries, understand how we can better go to the moon and settle there and Mars. They've been growing vegetables there now for the past couple of years. Just think of what's going to be happening in the future. Um, they've been sequencing DNA, 3D printing tools, amazing things have right. happened in the past 10 years. I think these next 10 are going to be the most significant science-wise on the space station. Columbia professor and former astronaut Mike Massimino. Professor, I appreciate you making time. Thank you very much. Joshua, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.